Okay, my name is Ben Finkley. Uh, I am the CEO of a company called Velocci. Um, just out of my own personal, uh, for, my, for my own ego's sake, really. Um, how many of you have heard of Velocci? Hey, uh, half the room. That's awesome. Well, um, what I wanted to talk with you for uh, you know a few minutes about today is um, uh, dynamic content. Um, and dynamic content really is a, it's a, a new and up-and-coming thing that's uh, coming to uh, many, many websites. Uh, it's, it's been part of the e-commerce world for a very long time, uh, but uh, it's, it's a difficult thing to... It's a difficult thing to do well. And you've probably seen, like, uh, you know, if you go to Amazon and they get show you, you know, your recent orders or, you know, things that other people have purchased that are, you know, just like you, things like that. That's an example of data mining and dynamic content. What they're doing is they're extrapolating information that they know about, or using information they know about you, they're extrapolating new information in order to sell to you in a better way. Um, and so, all right, I'm supposed to... Uh, Hit record, and hopefully it's not that little program that's causing everything to break. So, um, it still wants to do its, its thing. I'm really sorry. I should have done this before. But uh, in any case, um, so how many of you have seen dynamic content in action before? Thought it was a good idea, I wish that you could do it. Okay, good. Let me hit record. I think we're good to go. Hopefully there's no you know, financial documents that open automatically that I'll flash to you guys in a minute. <laughs> Um, but if there are, you can just, uh, we'll try for credit card information. Yeah, it'll all be recorded, so you can watch it later in slow mo. <laughs> uh, let me also quit out of, uh, Skype and things like that, because I have embarrassing friends, and, uh, I think we're good to go. Alright, so let me, yeah. Chrome's going to open 300 tabs. Okay, so I'm just going to dive in, and you guys, you know what? I'm going to have to ask for a little grace um, because this is, you know, out of my control. Okay, here, oh, I need to plug this in. I yep. think we're recording. Okay, well, you know what, I'm just going to dive in without my slides, and uh, hopefully we'll get caught up in a minute. Um, how many of you uh, have heard of a movie called um, 50 First Dates? It was really, it was, it was kind of a silly movie, and it was, it was about a, um, uh, a woman played by Drew Barrymore, who um, every time she fell asleep, she would forget everything that had happened um, that day. So every time she woke up in the morning, she would think that it was the that this one day that that every you know every successive day would get further and further and further into the past, and so she was reliving that same day in in her mind, and um, and so uh, her family um, would go to great lengths to kind of remake that whole day for her so that it was all exactly just the same as it was before, and what I'm uh, what I'm convinced of here is that uh, is that we do the same thing with our websites. Whatever, as long as you guys are happy. 
happy. Uh, <laughs> um, I'm going to. Um, I'm going to quit. No, I'm going to. Okay. Displays. I want to. Arranger. Mirror displays. Because I have no secrets from you guys. All right. Good heavens. All right, here we go. So, why are we trying to win over our customers every friggin' day? Now, I don't usually speak in uh, such harsh terms about our customers, but uh, I think that's what we do. I think that every day that a, a customer comes to our site, whether they, it's the first time they've ever visited or the hundredth time, whether they've never even heard of us and followed a random link, or they're our top customer, we treat them exactly the same when they come and visit our website. And so it's just like 50 first dates. And in this, uh, in this story, um, every single day, Drew Barrymore um, uh, just forgets everything that there is to know. And, and Adam Sandler um, falls in love with her and decides to become part of, of this um, travesty of, of memory. And, and really, that's what our customers are doing. We, that's what we expect from our customers. We expect them to fall in love with us so much that they're willing to put up with what's really a kind of a really terrible, awful experience, but nobody knows any better. And so, so they put up with it. So, you know, what I, what I think is that this is the picture of uh, what the world <laughs> is. And, and in case you were wondering, every friggin' day, right? <laughs> so that's where that came from. Okay, people are taking pictures of the screen. <laughs> it was worth getting my computer to work. Yes. All right, so, uh, all right. So what we've done, in, or what I've what I put together is a, a demonstration of um, ex some, some really cool technology uh, that's built into Drupal. It's, um, uh, it's called the, the Rules Framework. How many of you are familiar with the Rules Framework? Okay, like three quarters of you are familiar with it. How many of you like really know it pretty well? Like you have set up actions and rules and conditions much, much fewer than maybe 10, 15 people in the room have done that. Well, it keeps getting going higher. So um, not very many of you though have ever actually used the rule system. So what I was uh, thinking that we could do today is I would actually talk about some use cases for dynamic content and then actually just show you how to build it in, in rules. Um, would that be cool? Yes. Yeah. So cool. So uh, what we've what we've done at Velachi is uh, we built a tool called um, Automator, and <coughs> Automator is a, a marketing automation software um, that we built specifically for Drupal. We've been in the Drupal space for eight years. We've been the SEO guys, the digital marketing guys for a very long time. And what we came to realize is that many of our customers were using marketing automation and needed that kind of central repository of marketing information that was different than the information they could store in their Drupal sites. Um, we are a Drupal company. We are a marketing company. And so we, we looked around. There weren't any tools that integrated well between Drupal and marketing automation. There were lots of tools and lots of integrations, but none that did it particularly well. So we said, you know what? We need to step up here. And we created um, a tool called Automator. And I'm only mentioning Automator because it's where a lot of the data that you're gonna see today is getting pulled from. A lot of the things I'll show you, you can do it without a, a marketing automation system. But what's great about marketing automation is that it really can pull a lot of data from a number of different locations like Salesforce.com or Sugar CRM or even you know if you have uh, other websites that uh, that you're running, you can measure that information and bring it all together into the marketing automation, and then pull it all over into Drupal using tokens and rules. So um, one of the, the most uh, you know kind of simplest ideas is uh, a, a newsletter subscription. So uh, if, if somebody is already a subscriber, how many of you have a newsletter subscription form on your site? Um, okay, a bunch of people. How many of you have customers that do, of course? Lot, newsletter subscriptions is kind of a big deal. But every time somebody comes to their site, uh, or comes to our site, we were just saying, hey, sign up for the newsletter when, 
Remember, they may have already been signed up for the newsletter. In fact, our newsletter drives a lot of our traffic. So we were just asking them, sign up, sign up, sign up. So here's here's what we here's what we did. So I'm going to back out of that, and I'm going to go over to. Uh, go over to here to Chrome and I'm going to blow this out a little bit. And I just want to show you. Actually, you know what? I'll open up a new a new window. This is an incognito window. I'm going to go to. Um, I'm a big fan of doing things live on a working site because that always um, pans out. <laughs> 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 Uh, on purpose, the Wi-Fi here has been very, very bad to me. So I've been using my phone. I, okay, so which of course is going to be my tools. I need like a separate computer for doing. You know, <laughs> okay, we're loading up now. So uh, the idea here, and, and what I what I will eventually show you, is that um, is that if somebody is is already a subscriber, we're going to give them um, a different call to action. That call to action is going to be a download of a um, an ebook. Um, if somebody is not a subscriber to our newsletter, then we're going to show them a call to action that asks them to subscribe. Um, so I'm gonna. Uh, is the Wi-Fi connected? I'm gonna I'm gonna try to get back on the Wi-Fi. Let's try this one time. Um, I really am pretty good at this usually. <laughs> um, any suggestions, any advice? Have you tried any good? Um, have I tried what? Rebooting it. Rebooting it again. <laughs> 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 turning it on, turning it off, turning it back on. Uh, turning it off and turning it back on. <laughs> you guys. <laughs> Try this one more time. So I'm connected to the Wi Fi. I'm going to go to the old standby apple.com. Um, again, please. Are you able to ping? Am I able to ping? Do you use the Wi So, uh, this, yeah, you know what? If you're on the internet, if you're accessing the internet, please uh, yeah. yeah. stop. Yeah. 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 So, um, in fact, don't go away. Don't go away. Where's the keyboard? Susan touched it. It's my question. It's my magnetic personality. So, you'll just have to put up with the <laughs> There's nothing I can do about it. So, here we are on the Malachi homepage. I'm going to hit the little green button. Hopefully, we can. Uh, and let me just go to. Uh, and again, this is in, in an incognito window. And I'm just going to go to one of our blog posts.
Okay. See that off over here on the right? Subscribe to Vlachi's Digital Marketers Week. Now, I want to tell you something. We have been working on building this integration for um, about six months. And so I put everything that you're going to see today, um, I've put together in the last 24 hours using the latest build. Um, that build is up on B.O. It's called Automator. And it's the beta 3 of the Automator module. So, um, some of this stuff is not styled the way that I would like it to be styled, but that's, I don't know how to do that. I've got somebody who does that for me. So, I'm going to um, click on this subscribe button. Um, it's going to open up a nice subscribe window. I'm going to invite you back up uh, to subscribe to our newsletter. I might already be subscribed. Uh, then you will get. Two copies. <laughs> Twice as much now. So he's going to subscribe to the Digital Marketers Brief. Nice. And he's going to subscribe. And now, a few seconds. And I'm going to talk to you about this thank you page here in a minute, which I think is travesty. <laughs> it's not bad. It's got some debug stuff on and stuff, but you know, it's not too bad. But now I'm going to go back over here to the, uh, the same page I was on a minute ago, and I'm just going to refresh it. And because everything else has gone wrong, this will go right. Yes. See how this changed over here on the right and offers the download for the ebook. So, so I, I want to make sure you guys understood what this was. Um, he is not a member of my website. He does not have a Drupal user account. He is an anonymous visitor to Wallachia at this point. And, uh, and we, we are, when he click that subscribe button, we fill out his information, we're saving that over in Automator. And then when he came back to that blog page or any subsequent blog page he goes to and visits, it is uh, using the fact that he's already a subscriber to make a change to this page. It's, it's simply a list that he, is, uh, he was added to, and then it just pings it and says, hey, is he on this list already? Automator tells Drupal, yes, he's on the list. Um, our module says, hey, we're gonna hold on to that information. We're gonna, we're gonna cache that so that we don't have to go ask Automator every single time if he's on uh, our newsletter list. And we're just gonna hold that for the length of this session. He, so you can say he is, is there, is there a session? So, so there, there is, there is a, there is, a, so we put a, a, a cookie, um, the, the Automator, uh, module puts a cookie on his browser, okay? Now, here's what's really cool, is that we, we're using that cookie to identify this one browser. And in fact, we're identifying this incognito window, which as soon as he closes, is gonna be gone forever. But, he did something really, really nice and cool. Besides loaning his laptop, he <laughs> signed up for the Veloci Digital Marketers Brief newsletter. Um, and when we send that newsletter out through Automator, every link in that newsletter is going to be a custom link that we only give to him. And as soon as he clicks on one of those links and goes back to his browser and visits our website, then we'll plant another cookie on his browser. And, that, and then we'll have it. And then we'll be able to see everything that he's doing on our site. If he then, then the following week, He's commuting and he gets our newsletter on his cell phone and, and he clicks on it there. Then we'll find another cookie on his cell phone browser. And now, wherever he visits our site, we'll know that it's him. So, from that first encounter, every encounter after that, you're giving him very specific links to just that. That's right, from the very first encounter. And in fact, um, even even when he's an anonymous user, even he hasn't we, we haven't identified him in any way. We create a user 
for him. We just don't know who it is, and we keep track of everything they do. Of course, there's not a lot that we're interacting, but as soon as he identifies himself, then the interactions get a lot better. And so we can create rules, Drupal rules, that are based on his anonymous activity before he's even identified himself. But once he's identified himself, it gets really, really cool. Um, I'm gonna... Um, and he still hasn't created an account. No, in fact, we don't... We don't um, so I'm back online. I'm going to very gingerly. Leave this thing right here. It's like a security. Did you sit down? Okay. Okay. So. Um, I wanted to show you uh, how we did it. There's a question in the back, and then I'll, I'll show you exactly how we did it with using uh, rules. Um, with relating to the uh, anonymous data, when you do attach it to the data, once he actually identifies himself, does all his anonymous data you collect it up to that point and get attached? Yes. Cool. Did you guys hear the question? No. The question was, um, uh, it's a good question. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> all of the, the answer was yes. All of the anonymous data that he that he's done up into the the moment that he identifies himself, um, what happens to it? And the answer is it gets attached to his his ID, his his account. So he's identified himself, and then we can go back and look across all everything that he's done anonymously before that. And then, um, well, there's other cool stuff, but it's just about Automator, and I want to talk about it. So um, you can ask me about more Automator stuff later, and I encourage you to. It's a, actually a pretty cool product. But what I'm going to do right now is I'm going to go to um, the, the rules uh, module, and um, I've got them filtered by dynamic content, because one thing that, and this is kind of a tip, is to use the filters. Once you start creating uh, dynamic content, you're going to create more and more and more because the ideas just start flowing of all these different things that you can do. So, um, dynamic uh, content, possible examples. I have um, I have an Evernote file that I keep um, <laughs> that uh, I I have just dozens of ideas. For, for implementing dynamic content, and I've just, you know, it's just a time thing. So here we go. So, uh, and I'm gonna find, I'm just gonna quick command F. You don't share that Evernote page, do you? <laughs> do what? You don't share that Evernote page, do you? Uh, I, sure, I, would you like for me to? Yeah, yeah share that. Okay, I'll put it in a blog post or something like All right. that. Is that cool? Well, you can just share an Evernote page. I know, but that wouldn't drive you to my website. <laughs> <laughs> Because that gives me just 
I don't know, I feel like I have a little bit more control over it. So what I'm doing here is I'm saying, hey, if content is viewed on my site, content is a node or a, a list of nodes or something like that, and it's of type blog entry. So I only am going to fire this rule if somebody's looking at a blog node. The conditions that I'm setting here is that the person is not list membership newsletter. So they are not on the newsletter list. And let me, uh, probably the best thing to, to, way to show this is to pretend to add another condition. I'm going to open up a new uh, tab just just to show you what this looks like so we've got it in automator here's all the different things that automator so far can can integrate with and we're just using this one right here list membership um, things like lead score things like that uh, we're going to talk about in the class, but so when I say list membership um, it allows me to go down here and pick any of my, and I've got dozens of lists, probably a couple hundred at this point, but newsletter is the one that we're concerned with, and then I simply negated it, which is built into Drupal rules. I said, uh, when you negate it, it takes whatever the logical outcome is and, and reverses it. So the logical outcome would be uh, no, because they're not in the newsletter. And then I reversed it to say yes, because you have to have a yes for the rule to, to continue to run. So I just negated it. So, so basically it says if they're not on the newsletter list, then what are we what are we gonna do? Right? What we're gonna do is we're going to place a block. Place a block is a is an action that's um, added by the rules <laughs> bonus pack. Um, rules bonus pack has a bunch of experimental code um, and but one of the most useful things that it does is it places, it allows you to place blocks. Um, another little side note that we spent probably three days figuring out was that um, it, it does not allow you to place the same block that's already showing up on the page. It does not allow you to hide a block that's put there by default using the block system. So if you want to uh, like have a dynamic, like let me hide this block, You've got to have a, a rule to place the block and then another rule to hide it. Um, you can't put it there by default and then use a rule to hide it. That took me three days of developer time to figure that little thing out. Um, in any case, so, so there's some quirky things about it. So it places a block. What is this block? It's the block that says, please subscribe to our newsletter. And I could go in and show you the block, but you know, I'm not going to because it's just a boring block. The other uh, rule that's in place here is the one that says that they are subscriber and um, subscribers, and we're going to give them the ebook call to action. This is going to look very, very similar to the one you just saw. It's basically the rule is are they looking at a blog entry? This is the exact same condition, it's just not negated. So they are on the newsletter. Place a block. Which block? A different block. That's that's all you need to know. Just these two little rules combined with with lists from your marketing automation platform gives you nearly infinite control over what you're showing someone on the page. Because anything that somebody does on your site, you can set up a rule to add them to or take them off of an automator list or whatever your marketing automation platform is. Um, and so you can, you can then start to get creative about, well, if somebody has viewed a particular product, add them to a list that's called product A. And when they visit another page on my site, if they have looked at product A, Show them a little box on the side that says product A. Don't forget about product A, right? If they purchased product A, add them to a list that's called product A purchased. And then when they're on a subsequent page of the site, then show them stuff that's related to product A. You know? That's the kind of stuff that 
you can then start to do. Now, if you have an e-commerce site with a million products, this gets a little tedious, right? But you could say, you could create a rule, and I'm gonna talk you through it. I haven't actually built this as a demo for today, but you can actually create a rule that says, anytime somebody looks at a product on your million product site, create the list and add them to the list which means you don't have to sit there and make all the lists. You can have Drupal do all that work for you on that. And if the next person coming along uh, is looking at the same product, check to see if the list already exists. Or fire that rule once and then deactivate it. Right, if it's on that page, fire it once and deactivate it. So you can build some really cool and, and dynamic things. All right, I'm gonna jump back over to my slide deck. There's there's, that's one, one example. Uh, I, I, there's two questions, I'm gonna. So what is the performance like when you have all these rules on page views? Because you're getting it every time you view a page. That is an excellent question. The question was, uh, what is the performance hit that you take when using Drupal's rules system? So uh, there is a really cool uh, tool that is, um, I'm going to open up a new tab and I'm going to go, this one might, no, I'm going to open up a new tab and I am not an anonymous visitor right now. And so um, it's going to, and I may have to back out because it may have shut it down on the page, but there's a little, this neat little tool here is, it's called the Rules uh, Debugger. What the Rules Debugger does is it kind of, um, it's, it's, it tells you everything that the rule system is doing. So I just loaded up my homepage. I'm gonna say open all. And so reacting on event, content is viewed. It took uh, basically 10 milliseconds to decide that this rule was not going to run. And then um, I think this is actually, that one's false, that's what, okay, evaluating conditions of this rule. So we're at 10.05 milliseconds. It's evaluating this one. And it's saying, oh, that's false. And so then it goes on to the next one. So like initializing rules takes like 10 milliseconds, basically like eight milliseconds. And then it takes like, I don't know, a millisecond? to run each additional one. However, when it decides, and you, you can go through, you see all these rules, I've got dozens of rules in here, but here's here's the thing. Watch out your rules condition, lead scores greater than a certain amount. So I'm actually gonna hopefully show you this in a few minutes that um, you can actually show somebody a different call to action if they start to get a high lead score. You guys know what a lead score is? Okay, a lot of a lot of confused looks. Um, you you uh, you know what gamification is? Okay, a lot of nods. Okay, so gamification uh, a lead score is like gamification, except you don't show the person their score. <laughs> <laughs> um, it's not really for the visitor to your site. It's for you. And so you set up different rules that like, you know, if they look at a blog post, I'm gonna give them a point. If they download a white paper, I'm gonna give them 20 points. If they come to a webinar, I'm gonna give them 50 points. And then at some point you go, you know, if they get up to 100 points, that's probably a pretty good lead. They're very interested in me and my product. And I should, I should you know, trigger uh, a task in Salesforce for the sales guy to call that person, right? So that's what a lead score is. And so um, this is one, and it fought, this one fired for me because I have a high lead score. And you'll notice suddenly we jumped from uh, nearly no time to a half a second. Traffic source contains. This is, a, this is one that, that I was playing with earlier this afternoon. It doesn't even do anything, and that's half a second. This one fired, and that's half a second. Every time it go, has to go out to Automator and then and then pull some data back in, it, it adds half a second to that page's load time, right? Which is why we don't want to do that very often. 
So there's a couple of tricks. Um, if you're running a, um, a, a rule that uh, you only want to run on certain pages, have it check for that first, that it's on a, on a blog page or whatever, before you have it checked to see if the person's on a list. Because if the rule system, if it, if it reaches one point that a failure, it just abandons that rule and moves on. It doesn't need to go out and find out if that's true as well. So um, make sure you order things in the right way, or you know, things that are local are gonna run a lot, lot faster. And then for, um, for lists and a lot of the other points that we have that uh, are pieces of data that we're using, um, we cache it locally in, in a user, automator user cache on the Drupal site. So the first time it loads, it's gonna take half a second. The second time it loads, it's like four milliseconds, something like that. So you're gonna get a little bit of a performance hit on that very first page while it loads up the cache. Um, so, but there, you know, just if you're careful and you do it properly, it's you're not going to see it's it's undetectable practically. I'm going to take one more question back here, and I've got like a lot more stuff to show you guys. So, how well does it scale as you have more users, more products, more rules, more hits? How well does it scale? Um, so that's a great question. Um, it is a um, it is more of a, a factor of how you have your site set up. Um, so one of the things about blocks is that you can't really cache them. And one thing about Automator, since it sets a token, you can't really use Varnish. So you can, actually. There's a way to use Varnish, but you've got to use side... Edge side. Edge, edge side includes. That's it. Side. Edge side includes. So that um, basically what it does is it loads everything that's not going to change and then it just goes back and changes the stuff that is going to change. And I'm out of my favorite. So um, I'm told it's possible. We haven't needed to do it. Um, as far as like the, the speed of the site, that's really what you want to pay attention to um, and make sure that people are having a good experience on it. Um, Automator itself it runs on the EC2 cloud. <laughs> it's very robust. Um, and so if you're doing all the normal things to speed up your site, you should have a very performant solution. <laughs> okay, I'm gonna uh, I'm gonna move on. There's there's more cool stuff to show you. Um, I like this particular person. Um, words have meaning, and names have power. Uh, he has a very strange last name, but in any case, uh, this is actually something that as I was working on this presentation. Um, I realized how bad Velocity was at this particular thing, and I decided that I was going to fix it. And then I thought, hey, would it be great if we fixed it like right in front of you guys? Um, and then you could really see how quick and easy this stuff can be. Um, I'm a little scared right now, uh, <laughs> but I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to move forward, and if it fails, then it fails. All right, so this is a gift. What am I talking about? This down here. When somebody fills out your, your form on your site, when somebody subscribes to your newsletter, that is an enormous gift that they're giving you. It's a gift of trust, and it's a gift of their information, right? Their most personal details, their name. Nothing is more personal than your name. <laughs> Don't go with that, just go with that. <laughs> this is a slap in the face, right? Uh, I'll, I'll demonstrate because I have a friend on the front row. <laughs> Hi, I'm Ben. I'm Doug. It's good to meet you, person. <laughs> right? How awkward was that? <laughs> I felt a little weird. But it's but that's what we do on our sites, right? Somebody subscribes to our newsletter, and then the very next screen we say, "Thank you for subscribing." Here's some more stuff about me. <laughs> <laughs> so, um, <clears throat> thank me by name, right? You just gave me something incredibly valuable. Say, thank you, Doug. I appreciate that, man. And so, let me jump in here, and for time and brevity's sake, um, so this is the thank you page. I'm not going to demonstrate that I act, this is actually the thank you page. It is. It's the live thank you page on Lachi's website. 
And so um, I'm going to demonstrate how to thank somebody by by name. All right. So thank you space. And there's going to be, the name is going to be right there. And then what I'm going to do is I'm going to drop in. There's this cool little <coughs> module that I found called uh, Token Insert. And I can go in here. And one of the other things that we integrated was um, we took all of the person's contact data and we turned them into Drupal tokens. Woo! <laughs> All of us got an applause now. <laughs> All right, I'll show this to you. So, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to come down here and I'm going to grab this automator token, which is their, the person's first name. Um, so thank you, person, for subscribing to Vlogi's weekly marketing brief. Here's what happens next. All right, so I want to actually go ahead and rewrite this, and I'm, but I'm not going to do it right now. I'm just, I'm, but I'm going to tell you that. You know, I'm going to try to make this a lot more personal based on the little bit of information that I have. Um, but at the very least, I'm going to say thank you to that person. Um, we value you, we respect you, here's a picture of me to make you feel like you know me. All right? <laughs> so I'm going to save that out. And again, this is our live action website. So just, just so that you guys can see, what I, what I would like for you to do is um, go to Balaji.com um, and sign up for our newsletter <laughs> <laughs> and see if it works. <laughs> so go ahead, get your laptop and cell phones. Go to Balaji.com. I'm just kidding. I'll, I'll just I'll leave it up by in copy the window here. You signed up for the newsletter. Did you get a nice thank you, welcoming? I, I got I got a very personal thank you for subscribing to the market. And how do you feel right now? I feel used. <laughs> <laughs> I think everyone here does that way. Alright. Yeah, but we usually pay to feel that way. I don't know what you mean. <laughs> All right, so here I am, an anonymous user. We've we've gone through this before. You know that, um, yeah, we got to fix the big photos on our site. But in any case, um, there's a sign up thing somewhere. I think it's because I shrank it down. I can't. Oh, there it is. Okay, so put it down at the very bottom. So I'm going to say subscribe today. And uh, you know who wants to subscribe to my newsletter? <laughs> <laughs> what is it, Dries? Uh, I think that's it. Oh, by the way, this is Dries' email address. Uh, feel free to hit him up for whatever. So let's see. Let's see if it works. We're saving. So again, I. Perhaps turn off the defect stuff. But. Now, I did this with an automator token. If your site is a uh, is a site where people actually sign up, they create a user account, you can just use a regular token to do this. You don't need any third party software at all to create this level of dynamic uh, interactivity. Um, but again, you have to collect the information. I mean, they have to be like signing up for an account, and you go, "Hey, thanks." You know, whatever. And if their username is an email address, you're, you know, going to thank their email or whatever. But, you know, you get the point, right? Uh, I'll take two questions and then I've just got a few more minutes and there's still more great stuff I want to show you. Well, on your marketing person's night, your jerk that says John Doe, uh, and my email is John Doe at screw.com, of course. So just so I can get, get to your website. Later on, I go ahead and decide to actually get an account. You know, that is, now, am I going to be automatically created as John Doe? And, I screw you. Or am I, can, I, can I basically say, oh no, I'm really, now I'm really interested in your website and what you have to offer. After I got to talk to your marketing skill, as very many people do. So, I, oh, oh, it was you. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah, I'm making a chance. Okay. The automator let the life change your, you know, so, um, you come up with the John Doe and you're going to tie the two together. Um, the question is if I go into 
a, a site that has Automator installed on it, and I um, fill out a fake name and email address so that I can, you know, download whatever it is. If you do that on Volachi, you won't get you anywhere because we email you the link to the thing that you asked for. But um, which I recommend actually to prevent people like you. Mail you sir. <laughs> <laughs> well, I, I have you mail me there. That's the real address, so I can actually get your yeah. link. But later on, I want to become a real customer or something. Like that. Yeah. Uh, yeah. So uh, what we do, if you go in and you fill out a subsequent form, we're going to. Um, we're going to, we don't delete the original entry, but it's basically hidden, and we're gonna, it's like a revision, basically. It's like a revision. So you um, know used to be right. Or clear your your cookies from my site. And then when you come in, we'll put a new cookie on, on your browser, and we'll consider you a completely different person, right? Um, so, you know, next time you do that, just so that you're not, um, Polluting the web. <laughs> Open an, an anonymous browser window. I really appreciate the question. I just like to be on YouTube about things like that. All right, I'll take one more, and then I got some more stuff to show you. Uh, um, if you already have Martin Automation software that's talking to Salesforce, yes, not talking to Drupal. Yes. And you put Automator on Drupal. Can you get it to connect to one of those two things? Absolutely. We are integrated with Salesforce and Sugar and Microsoft Dynamics and a couple of other popular um, Salesforce automation. Okay. Um, yep. And I, I know we're we're about out of time. People are running out, but yeah, we're integrated with a lot of different tools. So this is this is actually a great thing. If your salesperson. Um, uh, Opens up. So, so say somebody had a good high lead score. They they uh, it triggered a call to the sales uh, for the salesperson. The salesperson got on the on the you know, they got that ticket that task. Um, we've actually built in uh, an automator window into Salesforce. They can actually see everything that that person did on the site right from within their Salesforce screen. And then if they decide, oh, this person. They talk to them on the phone and they go, you know what, this person's not really ready to buy yet. They, they need, they're, they're going to be ready in 60 days, at the beginning of the year, right? You can very easily set up a drip campaign that's triggered off of a list membership. And so if that salesperson, they just, there's like two clicks. They click the name of the list and they click save. And it adds that prospect to an automator list triggering a series of emails over the next 60 days. And at the end of that 60 days, it pushes a task back into Salesforce to tell the salesperson it's time to call that person. You don't need to lose leads. Leads are gold. You, if, if they're not ready to buy today, they will be someday. You should nurture them. So this presentation was about Drupal. It was about how you can use some Drupal systems with third-party systems or as a standalone thing to really make some dynamic content experiences. Um, Automator is a full-featured marketing automation platform that we built specifically to integrate in with Drupal. Um, if you want more information about either of those things, if you're interested, please come up and grab one of my cards and leave me your card. Um, everybody that is here in the room today, not on the video, um, if you will leave me your card, I will give you a free trial of Automator and help you get it installed on a dev site or whatever you want so that you can try some of this stuff out with an actual working marketing automation suite. Okay? Thanks, everybody.